Studies show that red light therapy works, but only if you're doing it right. Make any of the mistakes I'm about to show you, you might as well be shining a flashlight on your face or body. Most people unknowingly make these simple mistakes that block results, waste money, and turn a powerful science-backed wellness tool into just another gadget, collecting dust on the shelf. Hi, my name is Dr. Vivian Chen. I'm an integrative doctor and I care deeply and passionately about evidence-based wellness. And I'm here to bridge the gap between science and everyday health practices. Today, I'm walking you through the five most common mistakes I see people make with red light therapy, especially the ones that can quietly hinder results or slow your progress. The most important one is number five, because once you understand how to work with your body and your red light therapy device, that's when we can start to expect to shift towards glowy, smooth skin, better rest, and noticeable improvements in energy. And by the way, if you've been eyeing and looking for a high quality third party tested red light device that you can trust, you can save $260 off the Loombox using the link in the description. Now let's get to it. Mistake number one, Investing money in the wrong device or buying cheap devices that have no third-party testing or necessary certifications. As a consumer myself, when I spend money on something, I want quality I can trust. And when it comes to red light therapy, it's the wild west. How well a device works really depends on something called irradiance. Basically, that means how much light energy your body receives. If you want to treat your joints, and muscles which are deep and requires the light to travel down into the target tissue, you need quite a lot of power to see that impact. However, if you want to treat your skin, which is on the surface, then you don't need as much light. I see people using weak face masks on their joints and muscles and it just won't work. Studies show that you need a high irradiance, typically between 50 to 150 milliwatts per centimeter squared for something like joints and muscles. So make sure you know what you're getting. When you're shopping for a device, look for irradiance that's been third party tested and verified, and not just a random number listed under specifications on their website with no proof or verification. Mistake number two, using a device that has not been tested for safety. This part is really important because if you're anything like me, you want to know the device you're using is actually safe. I always look for IEC safety standards in a medical device. IEC 60601 in particular is the gold standard for medical electrical equipment. If a red light device meets IEC 60601, it's been independently tested and shown to be safe and high quality for wellness use. I also look for other IEC certifications. I'm going to list it on the screen. These look for EMF and things like optical safety. Loombox is third party tested and meets the IEC standards I personally look for as a doctor. Mistake number three, using a big panel to spot treat a small area. This is a common one. People often assume that bigger is better and it often is not. For example, I know somebody who tried to get relief from their knee pain, but instead of using a targeted device like this over their knees, they stood in front of a half body, huge panel, which covered their entire legs for 20 minutes, twice a day, just to treat their knees. Sure, their knees probably benefited, but they may also have gotten way too much light overall. And here's why that matters. The larger the area you expose, the longer you go, the more total light dose you're delivering to the body. And with red light therapy, more total dosage is not always better. There's a sweet spot when it comes to total dosage. If you go beyond that, the benefits can actually start to decline. And some people may feel tired, headachy when they get too much total dosage. So. If you use red light therapy, and particularly if you're using a big panel and you start to see some initial benefit, but the benefit kind of drops off and disappears, you might actually be getting too much. So if I'm treating a sore joint, I personally prefer to use a smaller handheld device. It's more efficient, it's more convenient. I can sit on my sofa and do it, and I can focus the light exactly where I need it without getting too much on the rest of my body. Now, if I were a professional athlete and I needed full body muscle activation and recovery, that's when I'd use a big panel. But even then, I'd keep the session short because depending on the irradiance, staying too long can actually backfire. 
With something portable like the Loombox, it's much harder to overdo it. But even then, I usually don't recommend using it on the same area of the body for more than two cycles per day. Some people only need one. And for things like your facial skin, which requires very little light, we actually recommend you only use it for about six minutes a day and you'd use it about five inches away. Now, of course, everybody's different and some people need more light than others. So I recommend everybody to try, see how your body responds and slowly titrate the length of treatment to where you stop seeing results and benefits because that's likely the sweet spot for you. If you're looking for a high quality third party tested device you can trust, use the link below in the description to save $260 off on the loom box. Mistake number four, let's be honest, most of us want a magic wand. Something fast, effortless, immediate, and I get that. But as a doctor, I can tell you magic wands don't exist in health. If you want health that truly lasts, you need consistency and patience. Red light therapy isn't a quick fix. And honestly, that's a good thing because it works deep at the cellular level and it's not just masking symptoms. It's supporting the actual root of root causes, the mitochondria. These are the tiny powerhouses inside every single cell, except our red blood cells, and it produces the energy our cells and our body needs and runs on. That energy fuels everything from your brain to your skin, to your muscles, to your hormones and immune system. So when you hear that red light therapy can help with so many different things like fine lines, wrinkles, muscle recovery, pain, it's not woo woo, it's not snake oil. There's a solid science behind that. It's because these improvements all rely on healthy energy producing cells. But here's the catch. Just because the therapy is working on the inside doesn't mean you'll see changes on the outside right away. Visible results like smoother skin, faster recovery or less joint pain, they come with consistent use. Now, how long does it take generally? Well, it kind of depends on what your goal is. And it depends on a few things like the quality of your device, your overall health and what you're using it for. If you're using a cheap underpowered light, you may never see results. But with a high quality professional device, some people see a difference very quickly, especially for things like muscle tension, period cramps, inflammation. But for benefits where structural changes are occurring, like improved skin texture or hair growth, that takes more time. For example, there's a study on facial rejuvenation that showed that most subjects didn't see the biggest improvement in their skin until eight weeks in. On the other hand, there are studies on pain and inflammation that have found noticeable benefits as soon as 10 days into treatment. So yes, red light therapy works, but it's not instant. It's cumulative. The longer you stick with it, the more your body responds. Mistake number five, expecting it to be a magic cure and making no other lifestyle changes. Red light therapy is powerful, but it's not a magic bullet. Yes, it helps me relieve pain temporarily, but if whatever is causing that pain persists, the pain will return and you will need to use red light therapy again and again every single day, which is fine if you don't mind doing that. Red light therapy is generally pretty safe but red light therapy really works best when it's part of a bigger wellness picture. Your body is a system, everything in our bodies are connected. So if you're regularly skipping sleep, constantly stressed, mainly eating ultra processed food, you might be canceling out some of the very benefits of red light therapy. Although red light therapy, I do sometimes use when I'm tired and just need a little boost. As some doctors say, you can't out-exercise a poor diet. Similarly, you can't out-red light therapy a poor lifestyle and diet. Yes, it can provide benefits, but these benefits will likely be short-lived if you're not pairing red light therapy with a healthy lifestyle and diet. In fact, I believe that when red light therapy is paired with a healthy lifestyle and diet, the benefits are synergistic. For example, this study showed that pairing matcha, my favorite antioxidant rich drink with red light therapy could actually enhance the skin benefits. If you've been investing time and resources into red light therapy and not seeing the results you hope for, these mistakes could be why. 
The good news is the fix is simpler than you think. Even correcting just one of these can finally unlock the benefits you've been chasing whether that's better skin, brighter mood, or faster recovery. And if you're committed to making red light therapy really work for you, don't miss the next video. I'll walk you through exactly when to use your device, morning versus night, ideal timing, how to make sure your dose is just right. And don't forget to grab our free guide on how to choose the right red light therapy device. And if you know Loombox is the device you want to try right now, we're offering this amazing community $260 off the Loombox. Just use the link in the description or use the code 23LBYT at checkout.